Welcome back. In today's video, we are going to show how you can uh, use Axios API uh, that's based on the fetch function, the fetch API that we implemented in the previous video for the QuickJS uh, JavaScript engine. Again, uh, QuickJS is not Node, it's not a demo, it's, not, it's just simple lightweight JavaScript engine. It doesn't come with event loop, loop. so you have to reinvent all of these tools on your own or use existing libraries. So in this series, we're going to cover like multiple approaches to this, like some really uh, shortcuts, uh, like elegant solutions that just work and demonstrate how you can implement this. But the purpose is not to create the most performant code. The purpose is to show you the, you know, the hacks, how this could be implemented. Uh, so some, how some features can be implemented uh, without the full blown like event loop or libraries and so on. But in one of the future videos, we'll also cover uh, definitely how this is done under the hood, how it can be made more performant and so on and so on. So without further ado, let's start. Axios is a library for the network uh, making for making network requests. So it's HTTP client. Uh, it's usually used in the browser or the node on the backend to make ser uh, requests against the HTTP server. Since it, it's based on uh, XHR or XML uh, HTTP request, we cannot, uh, cannot use it because we don't have a XML HTTP request uh, class in uh, QuickJS. However, what we have is the fetch function that we implemented last time. But the problem is Axios is not based on fetch. There is a really nice solution. We are not going to implement this but rather we'll base our solution on the library that already exists. It's somewhere, it sits somewhere between. It has the uh, Axios API. It supports Axios API, uh, but it's based on the fetch. And fetch is in browsers, the native function already present in the modern browsers. The library is called the uh, red Axios. We'll tweak it a little bit to make it more uh, QuickJS friendly. And that's just like a really small subset of that library that needs to be fixed. Anyway, the whole library is implemented in one file and it's well documented, which is awesome. Okay, we'll name it uh, Red Axios. And basically what we're going to do, we're going to recreate this example, the example fetch zero, and it will be called example Axios 0.js. Red Axios is actually the ECMAScript ES module. We can import it with is just by saying import red Axios from red Axios JS. All right, let's see if this is going to work. Just uh, there is notice there is a dependency from last time. Uh, we need a JSON server running in the background. So again, we'll go to example JSON server and run it like this and supply the file in which our database is located, the JSON, JSON database. All right, so right now let's check uh, our example Axios if it's working. Everything is fine. Let's see if we can if we can identify this uh, two eight one four two six in database. Yes, we can. It's here. That object with that ID exists. Let's try again. So this solution currently uses fetch. So in order to convert this to, to red axis, we have to do a couple of things. First, go to read axis. And at the bottom, uh, you will find this uh, where the fetch function is used. So you see it uses the fetch function, even, even the one provided or the default one in the global namespace. The thing that we need to fix is actually here. So just comment this code. And let's say const data equals so what it does, 
based on response type, it determines which function it's going to call from res. And res is actually the fetch response. So it's either JSON or text function. And then once we get that function here, we'll just call it. Uh, maybe it's good also to have const uh, fn like this. So it'll have a more sense if it's written like this and it's more clear to the developer what happens. And right now we need to, to fix response, actually to set response data to be data and return response. That's all. That's basically all we need to do. Once we're back here, from red Axios, we'll create the custom instance of Axios. And how we do that, we say const. Uh, by the way, Axios also supports this. Axios, red Axios dot create. And then we pass object. And that object has some properties. And you can file, find all properties here. Basically, what we need to do, we need to do a couple of things. We need to set the fetch. That's number one. Uh, we need to provide the fetch function and we need to set as well json response type so let's let's set first fetch so if the key and value in javascript are the same if they're the same you can just say fetch and that's all basically uh, we also need to say what's the response type and response type is actually json why is this important it's important because red axios based on this one will determine which function it's to use it's either is going to be json or text and where they're implemented they're here so it's going to deter it's going to call either a json function or text function that's basically all there is nothing special there let's just check if this works if we can really import this yes everything is fine convert the fetch to use axios so we'll say axios.post and we don't need all of this really so we just need object we don't have to serialize it access api does that for us and here we just say res data that's all then we'll receive data and we'll print it out that was the post call and this is get and uh, it's just axios dot get same thing here we just say dot data because data is a property and that's all let's see now if this works so this means that if we prefer access api we can use access api if you like fetch we had example in the previous uh, file uh, the fetch example is an example fetch 0.js so it's uh, more like preference of developer there's really nothing special there and it works uh, we just demonstrated that Axios API can be used from QuickJS. Uh, it uses the fetch function that we implemented last time. Again, it, the fetch function is not based on any event loop. It's really short. It's like 50 lines of code. Uh, it uses the curl and uh, creates the curl command and then passes that command to a subprocess. Subprocess executes it, writes the standard output, we read standard output, parse it, and return and create the response. So basically here the response is created. And then a red Axios uses that fetch function to actually create the Axios API and actually make the requests uh, uh, from client to server. That was all for this episode. I hope you liked it. Uh, again, we're doing some hacking here. Uh, these solutions are not really production ready, uh, but they're great for learning how things work, for experimenting as a, and as a starting point. So you can reason about the, the you know about your program the way you reason in Node.js and in browser, but instead of using Node.js browser or Deno, you actually use the QuickJS. In one of my future videos, I'm going to show you how you can do a multi processing, multi-threading, uh, but again, without uh, basically what we're going to implement, we're going to implement something similar to a web worker API, but that instead of threads uses the sub processes and communicates via pipes. I hope you like it. Again, for today's video, this is all and uh, see you soon. Stay good and stay safe. Goodbye.